Yes, good afternoon. Um, very happy to be here. Thank you for the invitation. I was asked to talk a little bit about GeoGebra, so for me that's strange because I'm the weirdo in the room, so I'm the mathematician. Um, but I um, at least can say that I have also a little bit of a computer science background. And uh, this was also the starting point for this project. I started it uh, 17 years ago as my master's project in, in computer science connected with math teaching. And I think GeoGebra, it's an Austrian project, so that's why I'm allowed to speak now. Uh, it's also a local project because I am now a professor here in Linz since eight years. Um, but it's also a global project, as was mentioned. So I think it's a good example of how the digital world can help us to spread ideas on a massive scale. And just when I was also listening uh, and uh, seeing all the wonderful initiatives and, and things that are happening, and I think there are lots of initiatives uh, on local levels, and GeoGebra was one of them. And the difference was simply that I was working and starting this project at a time where I could just throw it on the internet, and that was in, I think, 2000 three or so, where there were already more web servers <laughs> than in 94. And so people found it, picked it up, uh, did their own thing with it, started translating, started sharing materials. Um, and that's why it grew. So it was never uh, planned. It was basically a student project that just you know, took off on its own by uh, the power of the community. So that's really how I see GeoGebra. So let me tell you a little bit what this is this GeoGebra stuff. Well, community already said it, so we have lots of users now. Um, it's translated to lots of languages. All of this is done by translators, so we have... I had a little bit of public funding as a student. I had a stipend for my PhD, but other than that, basically, there was never any funding. So it was really just powered by open source uh, developers and, and teachers who were translating uh, the software and translating uh, resources, so learning resources. Our analytics show that there is even one user on the Republic of Palau, so I hope that one day I can go there and actually visit that person. <laughs> and GeoGebra itself started as, as math app, so we started as a desktop application, um, and then over the years, of course, things have changed, and today we also have mobile apps, which are very important, as obviously everybody uh, has smartphones in their pocket now. Um, and what we're trying to do is kind of cover the, the math curriculum, but it's also going in the direction of going more into STEM. So we are starting to experiment with 3D printing, with sensor apps, um, also coding is somewhere on, on our uh, list, so some things can be done uh, related to coding already in GeoGebra. And uh, what's really important for us is because we want to work with schools and we see that in some places, you know, everybody's online and like for me, I'm working at the university, so I always kind of assume that everybody is online all the time, but, but we see in many places in particular, let's for example say uh, Latin America, so we have a lot of users there they don't have internet in schools. They have internet at home, the teachers, but when they go to school, they just cannot trust the internet. So we always need to bridge this gap between the offline world and the online world. And I think that's quite an interesting challenge right now, how to bring stuff that is basically usually just web-based, how to bring all of this also back into the offline world. And also professional development. My feeling is that we're talking a lot about online courses, but that's more high education stuff. So in secondary education worldwide, it's not really happening on a large scale, from my experience. There are very few countries where this is really happening on a large scale. Most workshops are offline, are face-to-face. -face. So how do we uh, work in these environments? Um, yeah, innovation. So we're also trying out not just you know, uh, to replace the good old graphing calculators, so that's what we do best, but we also try out new stuff like augmented reality. So last year, we've started to work with Apple. Um, using their new AR kit, and now also we're working with Google on AR Core. And this is really cool stuff, and everybody who sees it and tries it out loves it. So you can put any surface, any uh, geometrical object on the surface somewhere in the room, and you can walk around it, you can walk through it. And that really opens a whole new level of modeling possibilities, a new level of interacting with uh, abstract 
uh, objects like they are typical in mathematics and also in computer science. So I think um, the mobile devices and augmented reality is a very nice example. You cannot do this on a laptop. You need a tablet and actually a phone is really better because it's just small, you can walk around, it just makes much more sense. So I'm deeply convinced that uh, phones are totally underrated and that phones are going to take over the educational space very soon and we're doing everything to allow that. So all our efforts are now on phones and we have a lot of uh, you know, people in schools who don't like that, but our, <laughs> our approach is now to uh, make it possible to use phones in all kinds of uh, scenarios. Uh, then the other part, apart from the apps and the software stuff with GeoGebra, is that uh, GeoGebra can be used as an authoring tool and uh, textbook publishers were mentioned. So these are the guys who actually pay the, <laughs> the development. So the way that this project is financed, that it's free for non-commercial use. So all of the ministries, all of the, the schools and teachers and students can use it for free, but the publishers have to pay if they put it in their textbooks. And so we're working a lot with publishers and uh, other uh, kinds of um, commercial providers who create educational materials. Um, for example, like here, so this is um, an app that was created with GeoGebra. It doesn't look at all like, uh, like any graphing app because essentially it has become a programming environment. So GeoGebra can also be used for programming in a very visual way, and that's also what we see sometimes that also teachers do that in school. It was not intended to be that, but kind of over the years it just got, got into that. And the, the cool thing for the publishers is that they don't have to pay a programmer, but they can just uh, ask teachers who just know how to use the tool, and then they can create the interactive simulations and interactive uh, content on top of their existing textbooks. Yeah, of course, uh, Nice stuff is also integrations with other platforms like uh, here with uh, Smart. So we have a plugin for the Smart Notebook uh, software on the Smart Boards. Um, and what else? Yeah, C-Space, so 3D environments. I already showed augmented reality, which is actually much nicer, but there are also these special environments with 3D monitors. Now it is already a little bit old-fashioned. And I already mentioned the community. So. So that's a very important part of our work, that we have this GeoGebra Institute network, which is essentially a large number of universities and user groups around the world um, who do professional development and to help implementation of technology in the classroom. Um, it's a math app, but my feeling is also that if we want to bring coding, if we want to bring um, computational thinking into the classrooms, math is taught everywhere. And math is a very good bridge I think for computer scientists uh, to get into the classrooms. And there are lots of connections. So sometimes I just wonder what's the difference between computational thinking and mathematical thinking. I think it's probably just who you ask. <laughs> it's a little bit a way of looking at the same thing from different sides. So there are lots of similarities. And I really encourage you, you know, Mathematicians can be nice people, <laughs> talk to us, <laughs> and convince, convince mathematics educators to, to do uh, computer science uh, topics in their classes. I think that's what's being tried now uh, also in Austria, and uh, I think there are lots of possibilities to do that. Um, what else here? So that's just some examples. Yeah, uh, global partners. So f that's very important for us, uh, embed with other platforms. So obviously local stuff, but also Google Classroom in this case. So that all of the one million materials that have been created by teachers on our open education resources platform, they can be just shared directly into Google Classroom. And that's really important for us. We don't want to reinvent the wheel, but just play with all of the systems nicely that are out there. Be embeddable. Uh, yeah, uh, preparation. So that's a, a really important topic right now for us. We want to kill the traditional calculators. So this is my goal now for the next three years. I want to kill TI and Casio calculators. And what we do in order to do that is we have embedded a special exam mode in our Android and iOS uh, graphing calculator apps. And we're going to release also a scientific calculator and uh, algebra calculator with a computer algebra system next year. What it means is you can use any smartphone or uh, tablet and just lock it down for paper-based exams. So there are very good ways how to do that on these operating systems. We've now tested it 
in pilots in several regions, in Bavaria, in New York. And I think next year we'll probably be at the stage where this is really um, stable enough and we have enough experience that we can, uh, we can convince people that all of the exam boards should allow GeoGebra apps instead of the calculators. <laughs> so tell your exam boards about it and we'd be happy to work with them. That's really my goal because I just think it's so stupid that everybody needs to buy a calculator when all of the kids have a smartphone anyway. And just think about it, it's also good for you because once we can introduce a smartphone in this way in the classroom, get acceptance, then people will realize that you can use it for much more. You can do coding, you can do all kinds of interesting things. And I think the key at the moment is just this intermediate step, we have to lock it down. So we have to turn off Wi-Fi, we have to turn off all connectivity, and that's what we do. And our exam mode does that, and we sometimes now call our exam mode actually a focus mode. <laughs> so you can use it in your classroom, just as the normal mode, so that they don't go on WhatsApp or, or watch YouTube. That's okay, sometimes as a teacher you want that control, and that's what we're trying to do now. Yeah, so that's basically it from my side. Thanks for your attention and check out the GeoGebra website if you're interested. Thank you very much.